blessings today. Uh, God really impressed on my heart last year like never before. And I was in the right age around Christmas. I was frustrated. I needed to get this shopping need out of the way. I got to get it done. I heard on the intercom them say the man had the tags and he pulled them off and he's in the bathroom. So here's a, in my what's going on in my head is hurry up, bust this guy. I'm in line. I don't have time for the cash register guy to go out and do all this. I'm in a hurry. And so I'm like, well, I'm looking back. I'm like, yeah, they're going to get him. And this is what he gets for making me late. And then I looked at him and it was sad. It was the most saddest thing I've ever seen. So I saw this guy and it was just sad looking at him. And in my heart, I'm like, oh, you know, why am I so selfish to want to hurry up and get out of the store when here's this man who's stealing a winter hat. Um, it's, he's cold and he doesn't have a lot. I mean, I know he probably put himself in that position, and, but the Lord put on my heart. He said, buy that hat. And he put on my heart that that man fought for you, uh, fought for the country at one time. And, and as it was like, I have to buy this hat. This, the, the, my attitude coming in here. It, it's changing me right now. And so I have to change my attitude. This is just a, a command by the Lord to buy this man this hat. And so the cash register lady went out of the way and I'm thinking, I can't, I don't have enough time for her to do what she's doing. I got to, so I'm, I'm going right back into to this attitude of, so I bought this hat for the man, but he's gone. He's gone. This is like a minute pass. And I'm thinking, oh, you people take too long. I'm trying to do something nice. And so I run out. And I'm trying to find him, and he's gone. It was like an earthquake. The, it just, it shook me. It's, it's, it, I missed it. I, I can't find him. And all of a sudden, he pops out of nowhere in the middle of the street. And I screamed out loud, and I come, and I have the hat. And I'm running towards him with his hat. And so I'm running out in the middle of the street. Both cars pass by. We're in the middle of the lane. And the cars, it's Christmas time. They're not slowing out. They go right by as we're both in the middle. And so I hand him the hat and I said, Merry Christmas. I said, Jesus loves you. And, and he said, yeah. And he chucked his head and he walked on. And when I walked back, it was like, oh, the burden was off of my shoulder. The attitude had been lifted. The hurry had been lifted. Hurry sometimes is a danger because we're hurrying, hurrying, hurrying in life sometimes for nothing when God's saying, the peace of me is upon you today. Luke 2 and 7, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room in the inn. Swaddling clothes is what they use to clothe the dead. And they're lying little baby Jesus in the manger, which is a feeding stall for the animals. The way that Christ came into this world was not so much glory in the natural of what it looked like but it was glory in the spirit and wow this is amazing because it's representation of what he means to us when he comes into our life and we're dead and clothed and and swaddling clothes lying in the feeding stool of the demonic forces of the world but yet jesus came and here's where i got such revelation the verse after that which is eight and then 9 and 10. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. No, lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. He came upon the shepherds. These are low class society people. These are the lowest of the low. And, but yet the angel of the Lord came to them. Because it says right here in the scripture, And the angel of the Lord said to them, Fear not, behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will shall be to all people. I want you to slow down this Christmas. I urge you to slow down this Christmas where you could miss the call of God if you're out there and into this material world thinking of how you're going to get by and all this slow down into the love of Christ and what it really represents 
Uh, he came to the shepherd. A shepherd in this time would be like someone you see with a bunch of baggage, with a with a uh, a solemn man with a bunch of baggage and Chico, and, and he was all scruffy looking, and 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 he was riding his his bicycle, and 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 that's how low in that time a shepherd was considered. They were unworthy to go into the temple courts to praise. That's how it is in a lot of the churches. You see someone like that coming to the church. Everybody's going to kind of say, I mean, we're going to let them in, but are we really going to let them in? <laughs> and so we can be careful this season to see how God's trying to call our heart to all people. I want you, when you go about this season uh, of thanksgiving and glory in Jesus, is to uh, not treat anyone bad to treat all those you see good. I don't care if they're unbelievers. I don't care if they're atheists. I don't care if, if they, they, they ran away from God. I don't care if they're bums on the street, if they're homeless or drug addicts. or Because God could be using this time to test you as a person to see where your heart's coming from. Because if the angel of the Lord never came to the shepherd, then there would be a big missing gap in the Bible when it says that he came for all people. So let us have in our hearts the heart of Jesus that we're here for all people. Try to have the grace and compassion this season for all people.